distance from that car ahead and can help keep you centered in your lane. Get 0% financing for 60 months on 13 models or get a low $199 per month lease on Rogue. Now the most exciting tech you own is in your driveway. Thanks for joining us tonight right here on the news at 11. I'm Larry Miller. Our top three stories tonight. MLB All-Star Week is taking over the district and we're showing you the hottest events. And DC United is now playing at its new home, but some dedicated fans feel left out. Plus, thousands of protesters tell President Trump to go home ahead of his meeting with Vladimir Putin. More on those stories coming up in a bit, but first, 7,000 customers in the district still without clean water. Drinking water in some Northwest neighborhoods tested positive for bacteria. Those areas are University Heights, Michigan Park, Queens Chapel, and parts of Brooklyn. Residents should boil their water before drinking or cooking it. Public pools that were closed today will be reopened tomorrow. Now, this boil water advisory started yesterday with more than 34,000 people affected. Our Stephanie Galehart talked to a business owner still boiling her water to keep her business open this weekend. We had to aggressively you know, boil our water, make sure all of our instruments were cleaned and sanitized properly with bleach. A huge inconvenience for Brianna McCullough, but a must. She makes a living serving up her famous ice cream in Brookland, one of the neighborhoods still under the boil water advisory. DC Water says water tested positive for coliform bacteria. High levels in the water can make you sick. I think there's a lot of misinformation out there. Yesterday I was with some friends and they all thought that there was the all clear. So if people thought that and went and drank the water and it could still be unsafe, it's very dangerous. I certainly uh, had already drunk some uh, before I got the news, but uh, I think that they're having a good job of sort of showing what's up and updating pretty often. Are you concerned about your health at all? No, not really. I don't think I got very much. 34,000 DC water customers were put under a boil advisory after a Bryan Street pumping station valve was discovered open Thursday night which created conditions for possible contamination. We buy bottled water for our son anyway. He's an infant, so it's been cleared out from the shelves. I like how people go crazy before a blizzard. So it's a good thing we stocked up beforehand, just coincidentally. DC Water says they will continue flushing water from the system and testing water samples. In Northeast DC, Stephanie Galehard, WUSA 9. DC Water hopes to have another update tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. And for all the latest information on this water advisory and how it all started, you can have it over to our mobile app as well as our website, WSA9.com. Meantime, a man from New Jersey is charged in the murder of an Alexandria man. The suspect, Pankaja Bashin, is being held at the Alexandria Detention Center on murder charges. Police found Bradford Jackson dead inside of a business on King Street. Now, this happened yesterday morning. He was just 65 years old. Police say that this is the second homicide in Alexandria this year. Meantime, in Fort Washington, police are looking into a quadruple shooting at Fort Foot Road. It happened at around 8.30 tonight. All the victims suffered non-life-threatening injuries. Prince George's County Police are still working to figure out what exactly happened. And as soon as we get more information, we'll be sure to pass it along to you. New tonight at 11, a new chapter for DC United winning their first game on their new field. Fans were packed inside of the stadium in Southwest DC, but some loyal fans protested outside their frustration at the way that the team is handling its ticket sales. WSA 9's Michael Quander breaks down the controversy. Yeah, these fans say it's all about equality and making a hashtag stadium for all. You can hear the chants, the drums. And you feel the energy from these DC United fans. But on the first game day at the DC United's new home. Totally heartbreaking. We fought for this stadium. This group had a bone to pick. We're not happy with some of the decisions that the front office has made. Labar Brava and a district entourage are two of three DC United fan groups. They're now feeling shut out. You see, back in February, the team announced it was only working with one other fan group called the Screaming Eagles. That group is the only one allowed to purchase season tickets to sell to the public. They've given a monopoly to one other group and they're allowing them to collect the markup. Now, when the games were at RFK Stadium, it was more of a free-for-all. Groups either bought tickets directly from the team or we would buy season tickets and resell them to our members. We've just been denied the ability to buy groups of season tickets for our members. 